Hello, good morning. Well, it's not good morning, it's good afternoon. Um, it's Monday, I'm editing the vlog. <sighs> Who knows if it's gonna come out today, cause it's a lot. But just wanted to show you my lunch. You know, I've been making these sandwiches and eating chips on the side. So today, I made my sandwich, but we've got cucumbers on the side. Just small changes um, that hopefully will lead to results that we're looking for, which is just like less starch in the body, less carbs, bitch. Hello, girl. The vlog is uploaded. We are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know what I love? And I'm talking about L O V E, love. First of all, yes, this is the water we're drinking right now because my Brita, I started noticing little black particles in it. And that's not the. That's not the first time that I've seen that. And so we off Britas. I'm looking for a new filter, like a new filtration system, period, because we're not doing that. Okay, so back to what I love. I love when a man tries to holler at you and you can let them know you're not interested and they receive it and don't try to like talk you into receiving it. They just say, okay, no problem, and they go on. Cause that just happened now. I was sitting down and a man gonna try and sit down next to me. And he was like, excuse me, can I, mind you, this is the second guy. And so I was like, girl, I can't keep him more than me. Not me being honey to the bees. <laughs> but guess what? I ain't here for the poking. So, girl, he done sat down. As soon as he sat down, I said, no, no, I didn't. I was just like, oh, I actually don't want any company. Cause he was like, can I talk to you for a moment as he was sitting down? And I said, I actually don't want any company. And he said, oh. <laughs> he like sat down and I think like it was just so that it didn't look so obvious. So he sat down for a second. And then he was like, okay, I'm not gonna waste your time. I said, thank you. And he got up and left. Like, I love shit like that. Like, please, please, okay? So tonight we got a little ramen and some wings. This is my dinner. This was an eat out kind of night because I did not go grocery shopping today. Also, I gave myself a little bit more work to do because I did not put all of the footage from the last two weeks into this vlog. That just would have been entirely too long and I really wanted to get it up today. So I uploaded a part one and there will be a part two. I just don't know when a part two coming out. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna edit tomorrow too. I was supposed to see my mom and my brother tomorrow, but those plans I think are canceled, so yeah. All in all, it was a good edit. Girl, I thought my water was off, and I wouldn't be surprised. One thing about me, I be forgetting to pay bills sometimes. They get paid, but sometimes I just forget, but I'm not putting that shit on auto, because something about that just feels like, it feels, it feels like my ancestors wouldn't like that, so I don't do it. I'm also a firm believer in Pay your rent on the last day you can pay it. I'm not paying you the rent on the first. I don't know what you think this is. Y'all owe me, first of all. I should be paying no rent. Y'all owe me and my family and my kinship years worth of free living. So, off top, I'm pissed that you even asking for this. You know what I mean? Anywho, girl, I'm about to eat this food, turn on a little television, and just get some R&R. &R. Just me and a damn TV screen. What do I have to watch? Oh, Umbrella Academy. So I finished Stranger, ooh, hello. I finished Stranger Things, that shit was amazing. I'm all caught up on The Shy. I'm caught up on P-Valley. Let me make sure I'm caught up on P-Valley. I don't think they put out an episode this week. Yes, yeah, so I think I'm all caught up on P-Valley. Finish The Bear, finish The Boys. I think Umbrella Academy is the only thing that I need to start. Yeah, yeah, they don't got no new episode. Okay, so Umbrella Academy it is, and I'll see y'all later. Bye! Oh, girl, I was in here talking to myself. First of all, I'm trying to follow my own advice by putting on my workout gear, even though, bitch, when I tell you I don't motherfucking feel like it, but it's moments like these where I really have to step in and say, no, Kennedy, feel like it, feel like it, because this is what creates the habit, is if you do it even when you don't want to do it. <laughs> Anywho, so um, yeah girl. But yeah, I was in here talking to myself because I was just taking inventory of like niggas that I've dealt with. And this conversation in my mind was sparked by a nigga trying to tell me not to talk about our interaction on the scam corner. Yeah, like <laughs> apparently, girl, what's crazy is that I was minding my own business, right? We talking about my business, mine. And I get a text from this nigga who I met 
that I briefly talked to y'all about because I said that he was acting like an asshole when I met him. And I was explaining that I feel like some guys do that because they think that we like that. And to be fair, there was a time when I did like that, but I was also very young. So it's like, we're grown now. That whole, I'm an asshole or I, I'm super aggressive, like that ain't cute. And even if you do like that, I made it clear in that moment, like I like nice guys. Anyway, so somebody, we're talking about somebody, sent him that clip because he texted me talking about, um, so I came across this video. Ain't no way you came across this video. <laughs> Just ain't no way somebody sent it to you. So you telling me that somebody, cause the only way somebody would figure that out is if they were also there at that party because I did explain his outfit. So that means somebody, 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 somebody put two and two together. And this is the shit that's annoying to me cause it means that somebody was in that party who watches my vlogs all the way through. Cause I talked about that nigga at the end of the vlog. We talking about at the end of an hour and 30 plus minute long vlog. Somebody who watches my videos to that extent was in that motherfucking room and didn't say nothing. And it's like, mm -mm, that be making me feel like, uh -uh, paparazzi, paparazzi. You don't know who's watching. Because I know this nigga didn't just randomly watch my hour and 30 minute long vlog all the way to the end and then see that I talked about him. Ain't no way. So somebody sent that bitch to him. And uh, I just have to say, I didn't realize I had narcs following me. <laughs> come here, come here. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck are you doing? This is supposed to be a safe space for us to talk about real shit that happened. And I know it's only one of us talking, but the thing is is that when I share a story, it's an opportunity for us to like kind of relate, share in the comments what's going on. A lot of times, a lot of us have dealt with the same type of niggas. And so when I come here, this space that I'm creating is supposed to be a safe space for women to discuss where they are in their lives, what they're willing to deal with and not willing to deal with, all that type of shit. You know, I just think it's so incredibly whack that somebody would send that to someone because what it, what you're not thinking about is my safety. Because imagine if this person had a few screws loose and they decided to do some kind of bodily harm to me because I shared our interaction. That would be crazy, right? I know somebody listening to this is probably like, oh my God, she's taking it. it it's not even that deep, but it's like, it is that deep. Um, you know, a person with some screws loose, it could be just the one little thing that takes them over the edge. And so, you know, I want this to be the last time that happens because if this happens again, I ain't ever gonna talk about nothing no more. I might even stop vlogging type shit because that is not the type of, this is not, that's not what I'm trying to do up in here. Actually, you know what, as I say that, no I'm not, I ain't gonna stop. Right now in this moment, you have just inspired me to talk about all these niggas. Welcome to the Kennedy Show! <laughs> Nigga number one, this is the last nigga I dealt with. We gonna call him Black Stud Earring. Now the issue with him is, and the issue with this whole situation is, when I saw them black studs, I should have known better. I have mentioned multiple times, if you meet a man and he's wearing black stud earrings, go in the opposite direction. I'm telling you that. I'm still telling you that. But bitch, I got caught up. He, he had me caught up in a rapture. And not for real, but just like, um, you know, he was an attractive guy, seemingly very intelligent, well-traveled, like, he just looked like, okay, you know what I mean? Daddy, 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 daddy. But, I get to talking to this nigga, and I realize within the first 15 minutes, it's not like shit in here. And let me tell you what I meant by that. I knew this within the first 15 minutes, and honestly, I knew this within the first time we text. But when we got on the phone, I realized for sure, oh, this is not my type of nigga. And you know what it was? He did not ask me one thing about myself. The conversation was me asking him questions about him. And there was never a moment where I did not allow him the opportunity to ask, how about you? Like I would take a pause, I would let it be silent for a second, and it would just stay silent. That's a little too awkward for me, so I would ask another question. And so, we're on the phone for a little over an hour at this point, and he's saying something, well, I'd ask him a question, and I realized that my question maybe wasn't 
as descriptive as it needed to be for him to answer. And so I was like, well, what I mean by that is, and I was re-asking the question, but asking like giving a little bit more to the question so that he can answer it fully and fully know where, what I meant by that. He says, Doug, can you, can you stop cutting me off? You talking about me? I'm cutting you off. The first, and, 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 and let me tell you something, that wasn't the first time he said that. That was the second time he said that. The first time he said that, he was talking. And I said, you know me, I'm an animated individual. So he was talking about something and I just wasn't believing it. So I was like, stop, you need to stop. He gonna say, well, if you stop cutting me off, you can hear me. So relax, put your shoulders down. This is what he's telling me. And girl, I, I, I looked in the mirror at that moment because I was just walking around in here talking. I had to look in the mirror and ask myself, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? And I said, give, give him a chance. Don't take it too personal. Maybe he's joking too. And so I let it slide. But that second time when he said it, I said, hold on, hold on, excuse me. Stop saying I'm cutting you off because I'm not cutting you off. We're having a conversation. And to be clear, it's a very one-sided conversation. I'm tired of asking you questions about you. You ain't asked me squat about me. So don't be talking about I'm cutting you off. Girl, we got fully into it. And by the end of the conversation, it was just like, you know, I, I just kind of expressed like, listen, when I'm learning someone, you know, this is the first time I'm talking to them, I'm learning them. I'm not taking anything personal. I'm not passing any judgments on them. I'm just learning you. And I said that because he tried to like psychoanalyze me and do a character assessment of me because I told him to stop saying I was cutting him off. And because I addressed his inability to have a dynamic A and B conversation and not a monologue where he was talking by himself basically and about himself for the last hour and a half. And so he was trying to do a character assessment on me and there's no way I could have come up with this on my own. I must have dealt with men in the past who made me feel a certain type of way and that's why I had to say that to him. I'm like, no, I said that to you because you just did this. This is my experience with you. This is not a projection of my other experiences. This is me actively in this conversation and me holding you accountable for your lack of interest or mutual interest. I hate when a nigga treat me like a dummy. And so that's what it was boiling down to like, oh, you think you're talking to a different type of bitch. Oh, damn it. <laughs> and like, I kept telling him like, you know, and after I had to say what I said, I was like, now nah, you don't ruin the mood because I could tell that it hurt his ego. It hurt him. He, he was like, I mean, and then he would go on and do all this talking and I was like, give me an example. Cause he was trying to, again, assess my character. So I'm like, give me an example, which he couldn't possibly do because he doesn't know me. And you know why? Because he never asked one question about me. So I said, give me an example. I'm literally just saying that da, da 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 I said, I literally just heard you. I'm asking for an example of the point that you just made. You're trying to make a point. I'm asking for an example so you can prove the point. Ding. And of course he couldn't do it. And it's just like, stop talking. At least stop talking the way that you're talking right now because it doesn't make any sense. And you're not talking to the type of bitch that it goes in one ear and out the other. I'm listening to everything that you're saying. And in that situation, I realized I can't be with nobody who thinks they're smarter than everybody else. And he had even made a comment that he thought that he was better than a lot of people, that none of these niggas is like him. And it's like, it's one thing to like say that and it's coming from like a place of like, you know what I'm saying, confidence and kind of jokingly. But when you really believe it, it's kind of a problem. Because ladies, if you think that he doesn't also put you in that basket of like people who he thinks he's better than or smarter than, think again. You're also on that other side. He's also looking down on you. And that's not a dynamic that I'm interested in. Some people are okay with that, I'm not. And what I was telling him was, you know, I feel like lately the men that I've been going on dates with, they kind of are looking for submission very early on. And I have no issue with submission. Everyone's definition of what submissive is, is different as we've come to know as of lately. There's a whole like conversation on submission. But for me, I have no issues submitting and allowing my man to be the leader. And you know, for me to 
let him lead and trust his decision. But to me, that takes time. How and why would I trust and believe that you can lead me when I don't know a motherfucking thing about you. I don't know how you live your life. I don't know how you handle your business. I don't know the people who you choose to have in your life. I don't know shit about you. I'm too smart to allow someone to lead me when I do not know how they lead. Allow me to get to know how you lead before you expect me to submit to your leadership. <laughs> and I feel like that is not asking for a lot. I think that that is very like common sense. But not to everybody, child. To, to some men, they hear that and they think that I'm hurt or jaded or bitter. And it's like, the fact that those are the like descriptive words that you would use for someone who is asking for you to be patient and allow you all to get to know each other before you want me to shut up when you're talking and, and allow you to speak for 10 to 15 minutes until I get to express myself. Or when I do express myself, you get to cut me off or interject, but I don't get to do it to you. What do you think this is? And who do you think I am? <laughs> I'm not that girl. And so again, like it can be frustrating in the moment and I was extremely frustrated when we got off that phone call because for me, it's like, fuck, I'm tired of these men being able to experience me and say that, you know, they got a chance to talk to me when they really didn't deserve it. And you know, I'm also tired of men using my personality against me. The same personality that attracted them to me in the first place is the personality that they try to use to weaponize me. You know what I'm saying? Now all of a sudden, my, my sharpness, my wittiness, it is a problem. Now it's disrespectful. You get what I'm saying? And I know I'm not the only one who's experienced this. And I want you to know that you're not a problem, baby. These men do not know how to handle you. And not all men, we talk about them those men who have ever tried to make you feel like your personality all of a sudden is a problem as soon as they're at the butt of it now it's an issue baby they're the issue okay and i have to remind myself of that i'm looking at myself right now like baby you need to know that because you know i was looking at myself like is it me am i a problem and i can take responsibility of my part in you know an interaction with someone and in doing so I will stand tall in that shit. Like, yeah, I know exactly what I said. And I'd say it again. Like, yeah. So basically in that situation, I kind of just learned like, oh, this is an egomaniac. And he cannot handle a woman who knows themselves. And he can't handle someone who is going to question them. Because that's essentially where the line was drawn with him. It's like, as soon as I, called out something that he did he was done he was done and i said i was like i could tell that you're kind of depleted and you know i wanted this to be a fun and light conversation i could tell that you're kind of done with that so we can go and he's like yeah i mean the energy did change i was like yeah as soon as it becomes not fun for me see ya i don't gotta stick around and figure out what this could be or will it change unless a man is actively trying to create a different environment Ladies, see yourself out because it's not gonna happen. I'm telling you that, don't waste your time, just leave. And I don't take those interactions personal because he's not just doing that shit to me, he's doing that shit to any woman. Any woman who questions his ego, any woman who makes his pride flare up, he's gonna act out like that. And that's not the first man who I met like that. Let's talk about Mr. Beefaroni. <laughs> Ferroni, I really thought that, damn, I found a nigga that I can actually like. And it's because we've known each other for a long time and kind of felt like one of those moments of like, we've never tried this, but we're gonna try this. And so we tried it. And what I started to learn about him was a majority of the people who he had in his life were people who worked for him. A lot of the dynamics that he was familiar with or people who needed something from him or who, again, worked for him, um, people who he assisted and gave opportunities to. And so it's always like he's the giver in the situation, right? Now, you meet a bitch like me. I don't need anything from you. So let's start there. Already it kind of shakes up what his normal you know dynamic is with people because i don't need anything i'm not asking for anything i don't want anything i'm just here to get to know you and what i realized is there wasn't much to know 
<laughs> How I describe him is like, imagine a big old mansion, big old, big old house. And you're like, wow, that's a big house. You wanna see what's inside, right? And then you go inside that bitch. <laughs> and it's a complete mess. There's shit everywhere. It hasn't been cleaned in weeks. The person who lives there is a hoarder. Mm -hmm. You might even see an unflushed toilet in that bitch. That was a perfect way to describe him, respectfully. Sorry. He did not take care of himself at all. Um, everything was a mess. And, you know, he invited me into his space. I invited him into mine. My place isn't a mess. You open up that fridge, you're gonna see nutritional things in there. When we opened up his, there were literal rotten eggs in there, rotten potatoes, potatoes that had been there for months sitting on top of the fridge. This was a person who vocally expressed to me that they don't eat vegetables or fruit. The only fruit they would be willing to eat is a banana or an apple. And I don't even think that happens on a regular basis. I call him Mr. Beefaroni because one day I was at his house while he was receiving an Instacart and he was unloading his groceries and I'm just sitting there doe-eyed and happy to be there because I love being in a nigga's like situation when they're just living life. Like I love that. That is me learning you. That is me seeing how you live. Those are the things that interest me because I kind of see, you know, I'm a romantic. I've been known to romanticize a thing or two. So I kind of like to see like, can I envision my life here? Can I envision our lives like intertwining? And as soon as he pulled out, Two big old six packs of beefaroni. Chef Boy RD! <laughs> yeah, beefaroni. I realized I ain't gonna be here for long, baby. This isn't gonna work. He opened up that cabinet to put that beefaroni in that cabinet, and he didn't have room for it because he had a big old jumbo sized can of beefaroni that he had to move up out of there to put the two cases of beefaroni that he had just purchased in. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? And this is a real grown ass, successful ass nigga eating Chef Boyardee beefaroni. And I'm gonna be honest with you ladies, in that moment I said, yuck. And I did have a moment of like, can I change him? Would he be willing to change? And what I learned after like the two dates after that is no, he won't. Cause even the mere mention of change made him get defensive. He put that wall up. Let me also tell you something about this individual. Gas lighting technician. This nigga worked in the gas lighting department, but gas lighting don't work on a bitch like me. When you are self-aware, confident, you know yourself, you can't gaslight a bitch like me. It's just not gonna happen. I'm too right here with it. The heart and the head, we too connected. So you telling me something as if I wasn't just there in that moment with you and you flipping it, baby bye. All I'm gonna do is laugh at you, which is what I did. I eventually just had to start laughing because it's like, yo, this is actually kind of crazy. And I told him like, man, I'm gonna pray for whoever you deal with because this is, you're doing mental gymnastics or at least trying to on me. And it's just like, fuck. I really thought about women in that moment and I talked about this. I talked about this in another vlog where I was just like, he really tried to play with me. I'll give you an example, a very specific example. One day he hit me and asked me if I wanted to watch a game with him. I said, sure. I was at Whole Foods at the time. So I kind of like hurried up with what I was doing and came back here and cause I needed to get dressed, get showered up, get ready, right? So I hurried up and did all that. 45 minutes have passed now. I call him like, hey, cause he's only 15 minutes from me. So I'm like, hey, where are you at? Now mind you, when I was at Whole Foods, he told me he was about to leave the office. So that's why I came back here hurrying up. So after 45 minutes passed, I'm like, hmm. I call him, I say, where are you at? He said, I'm still at the office. I said, well, why did I just rush to get back here and hurry up if you haven't even left yet? You told me you were about to leave 45 minutes ago. He said, you gotta work on that communication. You gotta work on that communication. You talking about my communication? I said, what do you mean I have to work on my communication? You should have told me that you weren't planning on leaving until now or whenever. Like when someone says they're about to leave, you give them at least 10 to 15 minutes. 45 minutes later and you still haven't left, that's rude. So I said, I just said, boy, I'm ready. I've been waiting for you, let's go. So 15 minutes pass. And he texts me, pulling up. Now, because I was being petty, I started taking my sweet time. Come in here, I put on my lip gloss, slow. 
I walk over to the mirror. I give myself a good looking up and down. I do a 360. I fix my hair. I walk slowly to my bedroom. I spray on some perfume. I walk slowly back into this mirror, give myself another 360, come over here, grab my lip gloss, and walk slowly out the door. This was about a five minute situation. I get downstairs. I see nobody. So I go to call him. As I'm calling him, I get a text from him, so I hang up the phone, and his text says, outside. Yep. Still nothing. Now I'm getting pissed. As I'm getting pissed, I see his car pull in. He's cheesing from ear to ear. As soon as he pulls up and I open up that passenger side door, I say, ain't nothing funny. He proceeds to tell me, what? What are you talking about? I said, yo, you said you were pulling up five minutes ago. How am I outside and down here and you're not even here yet? Yo, you gotta work on that communication. You gotta work on that communication. When, that's when I lost my top. I said, what the fuck are you talking about? What are you talking about? I need to work on my communication. You said you were pulling up. This fool says to me with a straight face, when I say I'm pulling up, that means I'm up the street. When I say I'm outside, that means I'm pulling up. And you know, when someone's trying to play those kind of games with you, you have to check out. You have to immediately in that moment realize you're not dealing with someone who sees beyond themselves. And I knew that then. And I knew this is probably gonna be the last time I hang out with this person because they lack self-awareness. They lack the ability to see themselves truly. Not the person who they present to everyone else because this individual, this particular individual does a great job of presenting themselves as a certain person. But again, that person is a giver. That person creates opportunities for people. That person creates, you know, experiences for people. But that person does not cater to themselves in a way that is of nutritional value, that is a, of a healthy self-serving relationship with self that allows them to know themselves enough to create a value system that is of benefit to their life. We're not talking about perception. I don't give a fuck about perception when it comes to my purpose in life. My purpose in life is to do the things that make me happy and thank God I'm the type of person that being kind, making people laugh, you know, making myself feel good, okay? With laughter, with eating well, taking care of myself, getting to know people, genuinely caring about people. Those are things that I care about that make me feel fulfilled and purposeful, okay? And I, realize that our value systems were not the same. This is a person who valued his socialite status. This is a person who values what people think of him in his work. He values those things more than what his body is telling him when he looks in the mirror. And uh, yeah, and so, you know, unfortunately, that was our last time hanging out. And for a minute when he called me, he FaceTimed me like a week or two after that. I think he was under the impression that he stopped talking to me. <laughs> it's like, think whatever you want, okay? But I knew when I saw them two cases of beefaroni, you were done. Just know that. Um, all right. I think that's enough for the nigga talk today. We will revisit this conversation. I want to thank the narc, the mark-ass, whack-ass, lame-ass bitch who decided to share you know, that clip with the the aggressive nigga. I'm, I'm grateful for you because it's people like you that remind me that I am doing what I am here to do. I'm here I'm speaking the good gospel, the truth. Cause you better know, when that nigga hit me up, he didn't say what I said wasn't true. He just asked that I be mindful that it could be damaging to someone. And it could be damaging to someone. Use this as an opportunity to think about the way that you were interacting with people. Don't try and check someone for calling it out or for talking about it. Be better. Let's get it together, okay?
I'm gonna put my camera on the charger. It looks like it just stopped raining. The sun's about to come out and I am going to go out and get me a good workout in. So I'll see you girls later. Bye. to go back to sleep and I just couldn't go back to sleep. So then I got on my phone and then I was like, bitch, get off your phone. It's 5.30 a.m. And then I was like, do you want to get up? So I got up out of the bed at around like 6.30 and I said, fuck it, let's start the day early. So I got up and out and I did my power walk and I'm just now getting back. And uh, you know what? I never actually pay attention to how long I'm out. So I left out at around Maybe seven at the latest. Uh, okay, so I'll be out for like an hour. I am just transferring the eggs right now. Um, I've never done that in my life. Let me tell you why that's so interesting that that happened. Wow. I normally don't get my eggs from Kroger because every time I get my eggs from Kroger, there's always one that's cracked. And so today, I was like, all right, I'll get the eggs from here, but I'm gonna check every single egg and make sure it's not cracked. So I stood there, picked up every egg in the crate and made sure it wasn't cracked before I bought the carton. For me to come home and drop one like that, that is really interesting to me because I've never done that. Alrighty then. I am gonna make myself a little egg situation, a little fried egg, a little spinach on the side. Hey, where's my spinach though? So, I've been eating like a maniac lately. Like, just eating, eating, eating. I'm tired of my fridge looking crazy. Um, what's going on? For the rest of the week, I'd like to just drink a juice in the morning. So I'm gonna juice my stuff today, but I feel like I need some food right now. Like another one of the reasons why I couldn't go back to sleep is because my stomach was growling. I'm talking about big mama growling. I was like, oh girl, like you are hungry, I guess. And I didn't eat anything before I went on my walk cause that like makes me cramp up. So I kind of like walked the appetite off a little bit. Not really cause like I'm hungry now, but I'm not as hungry as I was at 5.30 this morning. I also have a little project for myself. I have these vintage Dior slides that I bought. They're so cute, but because they're vintage, they are worn. You see how the letter D is a little chipped? So first they need to be cleaned. So I have some alcohol that I'm gonna rub the shoes down with. And then I have this leather paint. This is flat white, and I'm gonna use this to fill in those gaps. I have a little painter's brush. So that's gonna be today's activity. Um, and then I'm gonna make some returns. And then, I don't know why I've been thinking about like, I really, I've been thinking about a lot lately. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like my brain has been wrecked. Just like thinking about adult things that I have to take care of and like decisions that I need to make and all of that. And when I tell you that type of shit makes me want to curl up on my couch and turn on a comfort show so then I don't have to deal with it. Like, being an adult is starting to become extremely whack. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I've kind of been like stressed out a little bit and I think that's what's been making my eye twitch. And I've also been eating like a lot of sugar, I think because of the stress. I thought I just was craving sugar, but I think I've just been craving something. Um, something that just makes me feel good. <laughs> And I don't wanna build a bad relationship with food. So I am just, you know, have to look at my behavior and decide whether or not I want to continue doing it. And I don't. I think it's okay to indulge every once in a while, but there has to be some balance. And I definitely think that I am balanced, but I also just, I just don't wanna be eating that much bullshit. Like them Trader Joe uh, uh, brownie cookie things, I can't ever buy those again, ever. I demolished those, demolished 
them. I don't know if y'all are Sex and the City watchers, but there's one episode where Miranda makes this uh, chocolate cake. She's tearing it up, she's tearing it up. She can't stop eating it. She's like, you know what, I'm throwing this in the trash. She's throwing it in the trash. The girl opened up the trash and started eating it out the trash. She had to pour some soap on top of it to keep herself from eating it. That's what I thought I was gonna have to do. And instead, I just took it with me to my homegirl's house and we ate it together. So I felt a little less guilty about eating the whole thing. Yeah. Anyway, I need to eat something. I'm feeling like low in energy. So I'm gonna eat something and then I'll see you girls later. Okay, I'm looking a little crazy because I just took my hair out of the thing, but okay. About to clean these shoes. This is 91% alcohol. I didn't see 100%, um, so I just got the highest one that I could find. Got a little paper towel. They do the, hold on, there's a seal. Do I know what I'm doing? No, but we gonna do it anyway. Of course, we should like test out a little patch first, so that's what I'm gonna do. Test the patch and make sure nothing gets messed up. Okay, wonderful. See, the thing about buying these like secondhand finds, I'm gonna be careful because you see, some of the paint is kind of coming off. Um, but I can tell that the person used some black paint to cover up some scuffs. Yeah. Yeah, actually, they use like marker or something. I'm gonna have to use some black paint. Cause that looks crazy. Yeah, it's a lot of marker down here. Oh, they got my eyes. I mean, yeah, they used like marker to cover up a lot of shit. That's crazy. I'm gonna be honest, I just really wanted these shoes, but I'm mad that they fucking fooled me. Like I should have negotiated lower, but they have pictures up that made, that didn't have the shoes looking like this, basically. I'm just using water to wipe off this part. Use a little bit of this alcohol. Let me see. The thing is, is that the little like guffs and stuff on the black, you can't see that. What's most important to me is that I clean off the Dior part and fill in that paint where it is scuffed and missing some paint. I'm also gonna use this alcohol to clean the sole of the shoe. I don't want whoever was wearing this, I don't want their foot crud on my feet. Good riddance. Yeah, up close there's some nicks and stuff that I don't like, but you get to walk in and stuff, you can't see that shit. All right, let's get this paint cracking. This is tedious work. Shout out to all the cobblers. Very important that you're using like acrylic leather paint because regular paint will just chip off. Did the first coat, I need to just let it dry. Okay. Let that dry down for a second. To the other side. Yes. Oopsies. Heavy handed. Getting very arts and crafty in this bitch. I can go back and clean it up with alcohol after. But I'm not mad at this. Getting everything filled in. Look at that, like new. Maybe the other one. My question is, is it giving cute or is it giving childish? I'm literally just stepping out to return some stuff. Like we're not trying to make a fashion statement, but I also don't wanna be looking stupid. So this is actually a skirt. I think it's a shirt, but it was sold to me as a skirt, this top. And I just have the back part of it folded and tied around to the front. One, to try to like give a little bit of a distraction because I'm bloated, um, which maybe I should just put on a regular shirt, but also don't feel like it, it's too hot. So, fuck it. And I don't feel like putting on makeup, so I just have on the glow screen. And the hair was actually an accident. I was pulling my hair up to get it out the way so that I could tie this up in the back. And then I was like, So I left her. Um, anyway, so yeah, I'm going out. Make a few returns. I have some errands to run. I want to get Lysol because my trash can, I feel like I see mold growing in it. That ain't cute. So I need to get Lysol, um, Lysol spray. 
I want to get a new scrubber thing for my bathroom to scrub um, my shower. What else? I made a list and my phone is over there. I think I'm gonna start my period today. I hope you just go ahead and just come on. Like, you, you know, like when you have a day where it's like, okay, this is the day where you can come. This is the day. Like, go ahead and come, girl. Don't nobody need new surprises. Just go ahead and come. I could feel it grumbling and rumbling and, and trying to make her damn appearance. So just go ahead and come out. Uh, that's it. Hopefully I don't run into anything. I'm not feeling like the most spirited. Now I don't know what that's about. I really don't know what's going on with me, girl, but there's something going on, for sure. I had to tell my friend, she was asking about me. That looks better, I think. She was asking about me and asking how it was, and I'm like, I'm okay. Like, I don't lie to my friends if they ask me how I'm doing. It's like, <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Like, I've definitely been better. I'm just stressed. I'm stressed a little bit, trying to figure some shit out, get things together. It's like I have a lot of things to do and it's making me feel like I'm running out of time to do them. And so I'm just feeling like jam packed with stuff with not a lot of help. And uh, that always puts me into like an anger box because then I'm like, why don't I have help? And then instead of me like seeking the help, I just get mad that I don't have help. And then I'm more like spending time being mad about not having the help than like just creating solutions or like trying to do it myself. So it's a whole cycle. And I think also like the fact that I'm about to start my period also has something to do with my mood. So we'll see once this blood gets running. I'll tell y'all about it later. Bye. <laughs> that was gross. Bye girl. Oh, back up. Riddle me this. Why is it that every time a nigga runs up on me, right? Right? I'm looking like a literal dump truck. Is there a reason why? Are they attracted to this? It's never when I'm looking like a bad bitch. I look like I just got finished playing dodgeball and I was getting hit. Yeah, didn't dodge it. That ball smacked me a few times. Excuse me, hold on. Mm -hmm. Girl, not be liking tofu now. It's my second time eating some tofu today. It's sweet tofu, and I love it. I really, really love it. Anyway, I'm about to do a live. Talk the same shit I'm talking about here. You don't believe me? Watch this. One live in three, two, one. Da -na 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 -na. Girl, you know what I just thought of? And I'm telling you, I just thought of this. Also, I just got up. So if you see any crustiness, any dustiness, look the other way. Girl, I'm about to clean my bathroom, so that's why we in here. Girl, I should be about to brush my teeth and wash my face, but I'm not doing that right now. Girl, new theory alert, new theory alert. Girl, hold on. So, thinking about the last few guys that I've gone on dates with. Not all of them, but like, I say the last like three. And all of them are familiar with my online presence. And something about that made me think. I couldn't help but wonder, I've been watching Sex and the City, for real. I couldn't help but wonder, are these niggas going out with me, one, for an ego boost, and two, being extremely defensive and egomaniacs when they go on dates with me because of my online presence. Like they're making a point to themselves, like she, she might talk about them other niggas like that online, but she ain't going, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna let her like that, even though I don't even be doing that with them. And to be clear, and I've been saying this for ever, niggas love joking with they niggas. The moment a woman starts joking with them, now all of a sudden you being disrespectful. Now all of a sudden it ain't funny no more. Everybody zip lipped. And it's just like, mm -mm, I can go toe to toe with the best of them. I know how to crack jokes too. And so the instant you show any type of that, 
what I've found as a naturally funny woman, as a woman who's been funny for psh, since my adolescence, niggas, they don't know how to respond to that. Some of them, like when I find a man who has a great sense of humor, I'm holding on tight. I'm holding on tight to that man. That's one of like the number one things that I find attractive about a man is when he can, when he has a sense of humor, when he can take a joke. Cause it's not even just having a sense of humor. Cause you might have a sense of humor, but like when you can take a joke, because there is a sense of like vulnerability, humbleness and awareness that allows you to take a joke and it not be taken personal. And you can just have fun with it. There are some men where if you joke with them or joke about them, game over day over we, we it ain't fun no more they done and it's always just like ew what and i don't even be doing like crazy jokes i'm not like trying to hit you over the head with it it just be jokes and it's like wow this is never going to work with you acting like this yuck yeah girl i i feel like some men feel like they're taking on a challenge when they date me because they've created a persona in their mind based off of like the lives that I do on Instagram. Let's be more specific. I do Instagram lives where I'll have guys call in and I'll ask them questions and stuff. And most times like they're not guys who I would talk to. So it's just be very like I am bad. And so I feel like, you know, for someone who's just peeking in for a second, they see that and they might think, oh, she's always, you know, turning down niggas or she's always clowning on niggas. And it's like, no, I'm actually not. Like, if you really participate in my lives and watch them, I don't be clowning niggas. That's not what we doing. I talk about my experiences and, you know, if anything, I'd be ready to see something. So I'd be welcoming something. Um, hold on. Get up and clean your bathroom with me. Get up. I wish I had some gloves, you know. I shouldn't be letting these chemicals touch your hands like this, but. So for today, uh, I think I'm gonna, a friend of mine lives in an apartment building that I want to check out. And so I might go check that out today. And what else? Check out the apartment building. Clean up. Oh, I'm going to start formulating some pitches to send to brands. I want to get some more partnerships solidified this year. And so to be honest with you, every partnership that I've gotten so far in my online career, um, they've come, they've come to me. So I want to, uh, I'm gonna try doing some reaching out myself and see what I can make happen. Cause yeah, I want to pull in some some dollars before the year is up. So that's gonna be my work today. And so I'll see you guys after I finish cleaning this bathroom, which is long overdue. Um, it's not looking gross, but like I haven't done like a nice deep clean in like two weeks. And I like to do that at least once a week. So uh, let me do this and then I'll see you when I get back. Clean that bathroom. Don't stop cleaning that bathroom. Clean your bathroom too, girl. You are a lady. Clean that bitch. Hello, hello, A-L-O, A-L-O. Hello, hello, A-L-O, A-L-O. Hello, hello, A-L-O. Hello, hello. Wow. Um, hey girl. Pop. Back out, back out. Make him want to black out. Just came back from the grocery store because tomorrow I am hosting my mama and my brother. So I wanted to have some things for them. I'm going to cook them my. What did I forget? Oh, I got garlic. I need to get another onion. Put that on my list. Cause I do gotta go back out today. I'm just doing this. Try again. Who called me? Um, okay, so hold on, let me put this on my list because I don't want to forget. Um so let's go over what your girl plans on doing for tomorrow. So I want to um use my new serving tray, which is this little bad boy. So I'm gonna put some olives, I'm gonna put um some of these crackers on the side. I'm gonna put a little dip on this side, uh, some tomatoes or whatever. I just think this is too cute and I wanna use it, so yeah. I'm gonna do that. I got, I'm making the pasta with some shrimp 
and I wasn't able to get the Papa Deli pasta, pasta, but the Capatuca. I wasn't able to get the Papa Deli pasta, which is really annoying. So I'm just using this pasta, which is really good too. It's really good. I like this a lot. So I'm not mad at that, but I also am mad at that because I really wanted to make it exactly how I made it when I ate, but it's okay. Um, so I got some salmon for me to cook this week for my lunch. Um, and I got uh, shrimp for us. Let's see, got some cherries, the cherry tomatoes, olives. These are the tomatoes that I use to make the sauce. Just like some basic Roma tomatoes. And then some avocado. Uh, got some Parmesan cheese. The brown butter cookies. Okay, at Whole Foods. Crap. Uh, so I got these for us to eat for dessert. I have some ice cream in there too. Uh, Toasted Parmesan cheese. I got some cocktail sauce for that cocktail, uh, for that coconut shrimp that I have in the fridge. Just for me to go ahead and eat that up. Um, yes, yeah, so I got this. Maybe it'll encourage me to cook it more often because I haven't eaten it since I made it on the vlog last time. Uh, got a lemon, got some pears. Shout out to all the pears out there. Pears. <laughs> got some pears. I can't tell you when's the last time I ate pears. So I was just like, let me get a pear. I love pears. I just, I never buy them. Some pears, got some tulips. Oh, so I bought a basil plant because I use basil so often. Specifically, I'll be using it for the pasta dish. But I was like, you know what, let me, let me buy this. It smells so good. It does need to like low key be potted. So um, I don't know what I'm going to use. I don't know why I'm looking around like I got a random small ass pot for this, but I'm gonna have to buy me a little pot uh, to put this in. Maybe I'll use this. I'll use this for now. This is my uh, support the homies at end. Yer. So I'll put it in there, put a little water in there. For optimal freshness, keep plant and packaging, okay? Place pot in shallow water dish out of direct sunlight. Add water to dish as needed to keep roots moist. All right, so a little bit of water. Wonderful, cute. So I'll just sit this over here, out of direct sunlight. Now we up on this croissant toast. Um, some chives and I got some strawberries. All righty. So before I head back out, cause I need to make another grocery store run, I'm gonna make myself a sandwich cause I haven't eaten yet. I was planning to go, remember I said I was gonna go see, go see a friend's apartment building, but plans have changed. So now I'm gonna just go to the other grocery stores and stuff, which is good. I really, dang, I didn't see that. Dang, there's mold in this fucking plant. I'm pissed right now. Shoot, hold up. I gotta perform surgery on this bitch. The way I be feeling like a whole new person when I clean my house, like that definitely encourages me to keep my house clean because I realize like how much it affects me in a good way. Like how much I really perform at my best when my home is clean. In my house, like not being in order is definitely, definitely a reflection of like what's going on with me at that time. Um, anytime my house is looking a mess, my mind is probably a mess. Okay, there is rotting leaves all over this bitch. I'm not mad about it. Let's cut this shit down. Ew, ew. Uh, so I'll see you uh, in a little bit because I'm just about to make some food, head back out and come back. So I get pissed off mm, at least two or three times a day. Right? Today, the thing that's pissing me off is the same thing that was pissing me off three days ago. And it's the fact that my newest vlog, there's an error message that's popping up sometimes if you try and click it. Like I saw it happening when I first uploaded it and I removed the video, like took it off of public, made it private, re-uploaded the video and then it was working. So I took it off of private, put it back public and I kept that one up. Um, and now I don't want to take that down and put up the other one because that one already has the views and the comments and the likes. It just feels like wasted analytics, if I'm being honest. And so, ooh, somebody ordered char grilled salmon. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
anybody ever get in the mood for baked beans? I'm just in the mood for baked beans. So I'm eating some baked beans tonight. I got a baked potato. I'm gonna do like a half baked potato, this salmon, some baked beans. I don't care if it's two starches or two car. I don't care nothing about that girl. I'm eating it. That's what I want. I think I can cut this off. Yeah, but I'm really annoyed by that. Like, why the fuck is that happening? Why is that happening? And um, I'm talking about pissing me off to the top of positivity, pissing me off. Like, girl, don't even say nothing to me because it's really, really annoying. Just imagine working all day, all day on something for there to be a technical issue. Like, ooh, y'all don't, I don't think, I don't think everybody's picking up what I'm putting down. It is extremely, extremely frustrating. That's pissed off number one. Pissed off number two, it's just life, man. <laughs> I posted today about creating small wins for yourself because this shit's still sizzling. It's not even on a, on a fire no more. Sorry. I posted about creating small wins and a lot of times when I'm posting like inspirational or motivational stuff, I'm posting it for myself too. Um, or it's like something I'm currently going through or I need the reminder myself. And um, what I was talking about was creating small wins. First of all, choking on my own spit. The whole conversation was inspired by this interview I saw of Kim Field, she was on The Breakfast Club, and she was talking about a conversation she had with Blair Underwood, and they were talking about auditioning, and how one of her tips is, or one of the things they were talking about was just how you can't go into an audition with the hope that you're gonna get the job, or like, that's the thing that you wanna leave out with, is the job. It's like, that's the thing you don't have any control over, and it could be something for the slightest reason, like they're looking for someone who has black hair, not blonde hair, or they're looking for someone who, you know, doesn't wear glasses and you have glasses on. Or they're looking for someone who is 5'7 and you 5'8. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like something slight, just, or whatever. They, they like someone else's personality more than yours or they felt someone was better for the role. Whatever the reason was, you can't control getting the job. What you can control is, you know, how you show up. So their example was like, you know, maybe for auditions, you want to be able to read off book. And so your win for the day can be you read that shit off book. Now you may not have gotten the job, but you accomplished something that you wanted to accomplish. And so how I mirrored that to my own life and creating small wins for myself I don't have the answer for that because that's what I'm working on. When I look at myself right now, I can say that the small wins that I've been unintentionally creating for myself is like vlogging and doing it consistently and putting it out weekly and you know, creating a disciplined routine around it, as well as being active every day and working out. I will say these last two days, I've been a little less active but we're gonna get back on it tomorrow morning i'm getting up early before my mom and my brother get over here and i'm gonna go to the gym and i'm gonna do my walk so you know setting small wins like that doing that like i'm not saying that i'm gonna have a certain type of body or i'm gonna re reach a certain weight you know at a certain date for me it's just about consistency that's the win for me like creating consistency and creating healthier habit and that's what happens when you apply discipline to your routine like you start doing something every day they say you do something for 30 days it'll turn into a habit and i believe that because without thought now i will go and do something active just off the strength of it's a part of my daily routine same way i get up and brush my teeth and wash my face i saw this one tiktok of this guy talking about how you know you don't get the reward for brushing your teeth every day like when you brush your teeth you don't get the reward but let's say you don't brush your teeth for a week you will notice that you done fucked up. You know what I'm saying? So like every day counts. He said something like that, girl. I'm botching what he said, but when he said it, I was like, ooh, I liked it. <laughs> so yeah, like, I feel like I've shared this, but I've been writing, you know, a script and cause my personal dream is to star in my own show, have my own show. And so I've been writing this script for years, honestly, developing characters and kind of like playing into some ideas that I have. And while the dream is to have my own show, that is not going to, that's not easily attainable. It takes hard work. And so to kind of like 
give myself some wins in that because I get defeated very easily when it comes to stuff like that because it feels so far away. I have the confidence that I can do it, but it's the it actually coming true, it actually happening that sometimes can feel very far and make me feel like, girl, well, you know what? I won't write today, I'll write tomorrow. And then it'd be like, oh, I ain't writing tomorrow. I'll write next week. And then next week turn into the next month, next month turn into three months from now. And then it's like, oh, for the last six months, you haven't worked on this thing that you said you want to accomplish. And so um, for me, my small wins is one, the consistency, like allowing, like dedicating at least an hour to, to scripting and writing. And um, that feels good at the end of the day. Like, okay, you did this thing. Also like, I was talking about this, I feel like earlier today, but about like attaining brand deals and stuff. Um, I hate working. The concept of working literally makes me want to faint. And so I just, I I repel it. Like as soon as it feels like work, I'm just like, oh, 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 never mind, never mind. Gotta go, see ya. And I'm out. But I, low-key have to work to live and the moments like that be having me like bitch i ain't on this earth to do this i'm not on this earth to make money to spend the money to survive like that is not how i see my life but that is the way life is in this current moment right so just like facing the reality of my situation and like kind of you know just showing up for myself in the way that I need to because these things need to happen. I have to be responsible for the livelihood that I want to experience. You know, I want to live in a nice home. I want nice things. Um, I want to experience nice places. I want to travel, all that shit. And all that shit costs money. And so I have to make it and it's not gonna always come to me. Sometimes I have to get it and that's just the reality. And so one of my small wins today was I pitched to two brands and whether or not they reach back out to me is the fact that I did something that I don't typically do and with practice, I'll get better at it and eventually somebody will respond. So, you know, that. And then what's the other thing I wanted to say about small wins? Yeah, I mean, the thing about this shit is it looks different for everybody. When you're listening to this, don't compare what I'm doing or how I'm doing it to what you need to do. Like literally think about your life, your day to day, because everybody's day to day is different. I have a lot of free time. And so I, I have a lot of wiggle room to choose what I want to do with my day, my time, how I want to do it. Everybody doesn't have that situation. I didn't have that situation a few years ago. So be honest about what you got going on and figure out what you can do with the time that you have and go from there. This is not the time to be comparing. This is not the time to be beating yourself up because you don't have what somebody else has that makes you feel like they can get to something quicker. It's not about how quickly you can get to something. The congratulations, the claps, the awards, the, the ah, it's never because somebody got there quicker unless you are literally running in the Olympics. And we ain't talking about running in the damn Olympics. If you was not in a literal race, getting there fastest is not a win. You know what I'm saying? So release that shit. I don't give a fuck about who did it first. What I give a fuck about is me doing it, period. And so that's where I'm at. And bitch, that shit, that shit is stressful. I wanna give up every day, believe me. Like, I think people think because I have like a, a goofy personality that I'm just like every day and I'm not. <laughs> Ew, that was so ugly, please. But like, seriously, people do be thinking that I am very like, dink a gink 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 every day and I'm really not. I'm really the fuck not, for real. I pulled this kale out like I'm gonna cook it. and eh, eh. ain't. Eh, eh. I'm gonna make a juice tomorrow. Now, here's the other pissed festivity situation. When it comes to niggas, you got one time to piss me off. And after that one time is spent, I'm looking at you stank for the rest of your damn days. You gonna be playing catch up for the rest of your damn days. That's the thing about it. So it's just like, don't piss me off. <laughs> That's it. Like, you've got one shot. Don't blow it. Like, what do y'all think this, what kind of game do you think I'm running here? I need to stop. The stress is so bad right now for me that my eye has been twitching for the last week. I've been indulging in unnecessary snacks for the last week because I am searching for something, some kind of comfort, and I'm not getting it from the snacks, and I sure as hell ain't getting it from these niggas. I've been going to sleep at like three o'clock, and it's not like I'm laying in the bed trying to go to sleep. I'm laying in the bed with the phone right here, scrolling 
like an idiot. Like I know better than this. Um, but I'll tell you this much. I'm beating myself up now about it, but I'm gonna stop because quite frankly, it happens. That's it. I don't have anything deep to say about it. The matter of the fact is, it happens. It happens to the best of us sometimes where, hey, you know what I'm saying? Like, it happens. All right, you need to go ahead and get baked out of this. Got like 10 more minutes of that, and then it's done. The reason why I need that to hurry up is because I need to use this pot. I need to use this pot to make my baked potatoes because the other one's dirty and I do not feel like hand washing it. Like hand washing a pot right now will really take me over the edge. So I'm just not even gonna put myself in that type of predicament. Not. You know one thing that is good for stress though? going to the gym. And I know people be saying that and it be in one ear and out the other, but I'm telling you, it's not the endorphins. Maybe it is the endorphins, but like, instead of using that term, what I'm gonna say is, one, it's like a distraction. I'm literally not thinking about whatever else is going on, because I'm thinking about the fact that this weight is heavy as fuck. I'm thinking about the fact that I'm tired as hell. I'm thinking about the fact that, oh my God, like I'm really in the gym right now. So my mind is somewhere else. That's number one. Number two, you feel accomplished after you're done. It's like, oh wow, I really just did that. And you might come back and still start thinking about the thing, but it won't be as heavy. I'm telling you that. I'm telling you that. And it may not work on the first day, but see how you feel on the third day. Talk to me after you do it on the third day. I don't wanna hear Nan if you did it for one day. Mm -mm -mm. Talk to me on the third day, girl. That third day of consistently working out, you are gonna feel something. For real. Here's the thing, I want this to be the vlog that I put out next week, like this coming Monday. That means that I need to be editing tomorrow. So, I had a jam-packed day. So I need to edit a little bit. I should've edited today a little bit, but shoulda, coulda, woulda. I could edit right now. Like you could go sit your ass down and edit right now. Like what's stopping you from doing that? Literally nothing. I guess I'll go and do it then. Bye. <laughs> Don't you know no good? Don't you know no good? Oh, I just came from the gym. Pop, girl, shut up or you get slapped into next week. Yeah, you see that? And I know you see that. Uh-uh, uh-uh, not Papa. Girl, not Papa. It's too much. I, and the thing is that I don't even want to be all dumb. I don't want to be gong, 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 walk down the street. That's not my vibe. That's not for me. Um, but I don't mind like it being very clear. Like one swift pop, and your ass is down the block. <laughs> um, what about it, baby? Yeah, I just got back from the gym. Where did I put my the thing for this? I don't want these out. Um. Just came back from the gym. I am about to hop in the shower and then start juicing and then edit a little bit before my mom and brother get here. Ooh, I'm so bad, girl. Uh -uh. Bad, bad. Because it is Friday and I thought I would have part two of the vlog about on Monday out today. And unfortunately, I never worked on the vlog. So, unfortunately, you know what I mean? I think maybe I might put out a double vlog, but then it's like, bitch, no, you're not. <laughs> let's, let's keep it real. Like, you're not coming out with a double vlog. You're not gonna be putting out two vlogs in one day. Just not even gonna happen. Um, so, I figured that out. But there will be a vlog out on Monday. And hopefully there'll be a vlog out before then as well. I, maybe I can get a vlog out today because after my brother and my mom leave, it'll just be me in here. They're probably gonna be here till around five or six. So, uh, yeah. Or maybe I can get it out tomorrow morning. We gonna see. Tomorrow morning doesn't sound like a bad idea. Like if I vlog a little bit today and then vlog in the morning before I leave to go to Nora's house for her birthday, yeah. Saturday and Sunday are jam packed because I'm celebrating Nora's birthday. So I won't be uh, editing this weekend. That's why it needs to happen today and Monday. I can get part two out by Saturday morning and then work on this vlog that I'm doing right now, Monday. Yeah, it was really important for me to go to the gym. I really wanted to go to the gym. I need to get a gift bag. That's what I meant to get. I a cute gift bag. And that's it, ladies and gents. I Girl, please, this is what it is. Cause what do you look like right now? About that. <clears throat> when I tell you I have to move in overdrive because 
My homegirl is picking me up to take me to Nora's house. Well, to take me to Nora's parents' house. It's her birthday and we celebrating up there. And um, yeah, I need to be ready when she gets here and I need to wash my hair. So we got things to do. Thing number one is detangling this head. I know I didn't detangle the last time I uh, washed my hair, but that was because my hair was detangled like the day before then and I felt like my hair was still detangled. It is not right now. And I've been like pulling out dry fairy knots. Like I've been doing it on dry hair. So I know my hair is like knotted up and tangled in some areas. Y'all know I'm using the hair mask from Maui Moisture, the Shea Butter one. I love using this to do my pre-poo. This is an easy detangler. You wet your hair, you slather it all on your hair, make sure it's on everything. You gotta open your hair up and get in there. Make sure it's all in there. Maybe spray a little bit more water. So then you can massage the product in. You don't need too much product. Don't be wasting your product because you're overusing it. Let it do the work. Just pressing it in. And I got some shedded hair coming out with it. I'm moving kind of fast, so if I feel a knot, instead of me trying to undo it, I'm gonna add a little product to my hands because that'll help it kind of melt away. I'm gonna show you at the end how much shedded hair I've got. Um, this will be a combination of shedded hair and probably some breakage that I've got going on. Remember, this is how I do it. I just separate it curl by curl, which I know that sounds like a lot because when I used to watch YouTubers and they would say something like that, I'm like, girl, please, I'm not doing that shit. Curl by curl, you know how many curls is in this head? But when you really like get in here and do it, it's not, it's, it doesn't take as long as you think. And honestly, it saves you a lot of hair, which to me, I'll spend the extra 20 minutes on doing my hair if it means that I get to keep, you know what I'm saying? An extra 200 strands. So I'm okay with that. I have a goal right now to grow my hair out. So I want to keep my hair as healthy as possible during all of this because it'll have to be healthy if I want um, it to grow. At least the way I want it to grow. I want my hair to be luxurious, full, shiny, soft, moisturized, you know? I want my hair to feel like a pillow. So I gotta keep it moisturized. I went a little long without washing my hair this go round because I wanted to wash my hair fresh today because I do think, I think, and I'm talking about heavy on the think, but I think I might do a hairstyle today, like an actual hairstyle where I'm using some additional hair. Let's talk about it. Yeah, I'm thinking about doing like a long braid in the back. Not when I leave, but when I come back. So we're celebrating at Nora's parents' house first, and then we all come back to our homes and we are gonna get ready for dinner. We're going to dinner at a place called Umi. I'm not taking my camera with me, guys, because the purse I'm carrying will not fit this camera. And I just wanna be able to celebrate my friend's birthday. So I'm gonna capture everything on my phone, the things I wanna capture and i'll share that on here maybe if she's okay with it okay so that's one section down i'll show you how much hair came out pretty good amount of hair i ain't gonna lie I'm looking at it all right now but also i have not done my hair in since the pool since i washed it after the pool um what was i about to say yeah you'll see me come back here and do my hair um and like get dressed for dinner um, but the in-betweens, I'm not taking my camera. So this is how much hair I shed in this. Do y'all still watch hair videos on YouTube? I don't, only because, like, unless I'm looking up a specific style. So, like, if it's a protective style I want to try. Like, I'm, I looked up on here when I was looking up how to do knotless braids and how to do, like, faux locks and stuff. And I feel like now the girls are looking up how to do, like, frontals and all of that. But like, do people still watch natural hair videos? I don't hear as much noise for those videos and for those creators. Like there was a time where they were running YouTube and I feel like I don't hear anything about them these days. But that also could be because I don't watch the videos anymore. So tell me, do y'all still watch them? 
I follow a few natural hair YouTubers whose content is like mostly about their hair, doing their hair products and stuff. One thing I think should never go out of style is a product review. Like, cause the thing is, whether you need help doing your hair or figuring out how to do your hair or not, I still wanna know whether or not I should waste my time with a product. But I do think, because I haven't watched a review in a long time, I think for me, I'm at that place where it's like, I use the stuff that I love and I'm not indulging in like buying a whole bunch of new products just for the sake of like trying it because I have products that I know I like and that work for me. So I'm out of that phase where I'm like, you know, curious and oh, let's see how this works. And I'll, I'll just be like, girl, I'm getting what I know. But I know those kind of videos used to perform very well because it helped people save money. And also people just like mess. So if you talking about a brand and you know, if you don't like a product, people love a little fake drama. I was just talking to somebody about my I think the last product review I did, maybe it wasn't the last product review, but it was like the last, I don't know, the only messy situation I had. I have a knot. Let me tell you how I handle fairy knots. So the knot is down here. I go up here and I start pulling the hair up out of the knot. Sometimes you do end up having to cut it. I think this one is gonna just come out. Yep, this came out. The smoothing part of this is very important because when you smooth, you can feel if there's knots and tangles and uh, lets you know if you need to go in there and get them out. No point in doing this if you're not going to actually detangle your hair. This is not for you to just slather product on. This is for you to make sure your hair doesn't have knots in it before you wash it. You want those knots gone because those knots, your hair just starts collecting on that knot and then it just gets bigger and bigger and now you have a whole bunch of breakage. We don't want breakage, so get the knots out. All right, last section. Let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go. You got this girl, come on, come on. And somebody texted me, I'm afraid to look at it because it probably says it's about to be 1 p.m. And bitch, look at me. I've got a shower. All right, Ooh, I think so when I am detangling, I do put like from each section, I'll lay the hair out in order so I know like what section the hair came from. And just take note of like if there's an area where I'm shedding hair more in one area than another, you know, it's just a specific detail that'll kind of help you with the way that you're handling your hair because maybe you're doing some tension styles and you know, the crown area of your hair is like, really like trying to tell you something or you know maybe like your edges or the front area of your hair because you pull your hair back a lot it's like you know what i'm saying stuff like that so i just take note because i don't do a lot of tension on my hair there was a time and i didn't even think this was tension but i was twisting my hair up every night and while you may not think that that's you know a lot of tension if you're doing it every night it can and even though my hair got really long i felt like i had way more breakage at that time and that's why i cut my hair and this is like 2018 and then i went and got my hair cut i need to get a new straightener my straightener is not getting like to 400 degrees and i want my my straightener to get like super hot so then i could just do one pass because my straightener, I gotta do a few passes and I don't like that. So I am looking for a new straightener. If you know of any or if you have a good one, please let me know. But I'm always careful, even if like I'm not seeing any signs of like losing a lot of hair in the front. I'm just careful with my front because this is the front of my head. So I'm ultra careful and sensitive and loose with the way that I handle the hair in the front, personally. All right, the last section is done. I'm gonna wash with the Nourish and Spa. Yeah, all of my detangle here is equal in size. This is a very like lax detangling method. When I'm washing my hair and I'm conditioning it, I do still have some shedding that happens and that's normal. So keep that in mind too, like you might still see some shedding if you use this method because you're not like really getting every knot and tangle out this way but you're getting a good amount of, I say like I get 75 to 80 percent 
of any knots and tangles out. And then if there's any additional, actually I'm getting like 90% of the knots and tangles out, but there might be some shitty hair that I don't get to. We're good, let me show you the hair. These are the front pieces, left, right. These are the back pieces, not bad. Not bad at all. Now I'm gonna wash my hair. So I'll see you girls once I'm dressed and ready to go. Okay, hello. Woo, let me put this. All right, I'm back home. This is what I end up wearing to Nora's parents' house. Cute pants, long pants. The brand is called Arquette. I think that's how you pronounce it, but I love these pants so much. I don't wear them that often, um, but I love them. I had to buy a steamer because the dress that I'm thinking about wearing tonight is so wrinkly and I'm glad that the steamer came today because yeah, I need it. The steamer I had in New York was horrible, so hopefully this one isn't, but I feel like all these Amazon steamers are bad. This one had a lot of reviews and shit. Okay. So this dress is like kind of meant to have some wrinkles to it or like, but it's a little too wrinkly for me. Like it looks, it looks wrinkled and I don't like that look. So the first thing I'm gonna do is my hair because I think that's gonna take, be good. Uh, I think the hair is gonna take the longest. It's 5.30, the dinner reservations are at eight sharp. So I feel like, I feel like, what should I do? I'm gonna wash my face, brush my teeth, put my teeth in, and then I'll start on my hair. So I'll see you when I'm like getting the hair started up. I'm gonna put on something relaxed. Okay, so I'm over here trying on my dress option. So this is option number one. This dress is from, um, what's the brand? Revolve, but the brand is Super Down. And so this is dress number one. This is the one that needs to be steamed. So dress number one, very cute. The only thing with this is that I really wish that I had like some pink or berry colored heels, like the perfect purplish pinkish hue to wear with this dress. That's how I envision wearing this look. Let me show you option number two. Okay, so option number two is getting a little spicy. Check her out in the back. You know what I mean? It's like that. And so the only thing is that the way that I want this dress to sit, it doesn't stay that way the whole time. Like after you get to walking around and like doing what you're doing and oh, and hugging people and oh my God, hey, hey, hey. Like I'm just moving like how would that move? Oh, da, 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 da. I eat, uh -huh. okay, look at that, okay, yes. No girl, she over there. Do, 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 do. It is like a little loose pond the titty, which I don't like that. And this is a size small. It's loose pond the titty and it rises up in the back and does this like little gappy here. And so some people don't care about all of that. I care about that kind of stuff. I don't like that, that is not cute to me, that's gonna bother me, and I will be pulling this down all night. So then it is flat to my back, and so then I'm not getting that gapping in the front. And I don't wanna be doing that all night. But this dress is very cute. I bought this dress in two colors. Y'all have seen me post myself in the pink one on Instagram. I took it with me when I took my solo trip to the Bahamas. Very cute, definitely a head turner. Also remember that tonight's hair look is gonna be slicked back and I'm gonna have a long, beautiful braid. So there's gonna be a lot of like that. And that's why um, I have like a lot of back action happening with these dresses. So this is dress option number two. Um, cute, but gonna get on my nerves. Let me show you number three. So this is dress number three. Um, very cute. As you can see, I love the baby doll dress. I think that they're very flattering on me. It adds length to the body and I like it. So this dress, I actually wore this dress in Mexico, but I had it flipped inside out. So this is not a reversible dress. I had to cut the tag off the back and you can't, you don't notice it like that there was a tag there. It's just, it, it did nothing. So I was like, oh yeah, hell yeah. I'll just turn this bitch inside out. One thing about me, I'm gonna wear clothes that I bought. I don't give a fuck about, oh, well, I mean, I do give a fuck about it, clearly. Otherwise, I wouldn't go through the motions of like wearing it inside out. But 
for the most part, like I'm gonna rewear stuff. Like I'm not buying it to not ever rewear it again. Dresses are hard because normally when you buy a dress, you're wearing it for a particular occasion, and then it's like, ugh, I can't wear that again. I wore it to the so and so. But it's been years. I blew the dust off her, and she's absolutely an option for tonight. Um, she's just not my first option, but she is an option. And the only reason why she's not a first option is because I don't know if I'm going cheetah. Like, I, I don't think I'm in the mood for cheetah print. It feels kind of like, mm -mm. Yeah, like, the cheetah's not really doing it for me personally. I do think the other side is cute. Let me show you the other side real quick. Hold on. See how this gives you something else? Like, it's just, it just gives me something else. And then, like, the little light bits of cheetah that you see is just like, ooh, cute. And so, love this dress. I just... The fact that I'll be wearing the exact same heels that I wore with it when I went to Mexico, it's just like, okay, girl, you can at least get some different shoes. And so since I don't have the different shoes, it's like, that's why she's the third option because it's literally a full-on regurgitated look. Let me show you my last option. Bitch, the last option wouldn't even come up past my hips, so that's not an option at all. Okay. Hello, fat ass. <laughs> not me with the patty, but... Let's meet with the fatty. So I'm gonna shower and then come out here and do my hair. So I'll see you then. Girls night! Love having big, beautiful windows, but bitch, when it's hot, okay? That shit is like, please, enough. All right, so my machinery, fine tooth comb, brush, multiple hair ties, the hair that I'll be using, which by the way, I've shown this hair before. It just, I like this hair that has a little curlies on the end. I feel like it blends with my hair. So I'm gonna use this pack. It's the Water Wave um, in the color two from the brand Remy QZ. I'll probably use this whole pack because I want my braid to be long. I still gotta do my makeup, so this can't take too long. Like. I need to figure it out and get it done. So I, when I take it out of that little thing, I start kind of like pulling it apart because I don't want the hair to be perfectly um, aligned. So like right now I pulled it apart. So it's like some of it is uneven. I like it like that because it looks more natural. I don't want the end to look like one big old just piece. So kind of pulling it apart, creating a little bit of frizz a little bit, not too much because I want this to seamlessly go into my hair pretty smooth. So if I have any like this, I'm gonna just pull this out because that's getting on my nerves. Okay, we don't got time to be too technical, so let that be the end of that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna use two. Um, so I'm gonna put this up. I'm gonna use this curl jelly from Orbe. And I like this because it doesn't make my hair hard. And so since this is like my first day of wash day, when I take this out, I wanna be able to like wear my hair out and stuff for the rest of the week. I don't want my hair to need to be like rewashed. So I'm just using this to slick down any flyaways. This brush is really soft. Like this brush is kind of bullshit. I got it from icing, so let's start there. It is not. Lots of lumps and bumps in this. I'm gonna add a little bit of water. Break this up. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Let's start there, okay? So why are you over here thinking what you're thinking? Think not. Okay, so I'm just getting the first little loop. And now I'm gonna add in the hair. Okay, come on guys. Oops. Okay, I don't have time for that. Okay. Ooh, girls looking ugly. Hold on. Maybe I won't be doing this because it's giving fake ponytail. Let's see, is this the hair I used? Now I don't know if this is the hair I used. This is giving something else. <laughs> Does this match my hair? It do. Okay. Let me start from the beginning. It's hard doing this from the back. I can't see or feel shit. Like, I can feel it, but like, I can't. Okay, so what if we do it like this, right? Like, if we just do it like this, and then we just kind of start adding it to the hair. Okay, now 
need to add some of this to that. Okay, this doesn't feel like it's working, but maybe it is. This is hard work. My arms are talking to me right now. Okay, it doesn't, okay, it does look creepy as fuck. Let me see if I just continue. Like, what would happen if I just finish this gray? Ooh, it's a tangled mess at the bottom. I gotta untangle it so I can finish this. I'm about to cut something if it don't untangle 2.5. Okay, you about to get cut. Let me cut this shit because I don't have time. Okay, listen. Let me explain something to you. I'm not mad at that. I'm not. I know like you want me to be, but I'm not. Sorry. And the thing is, is that I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna fix it, cause it's looking crazy where my hair is. And I'm gonna fix it by making the whole braid big like that. And I'm just wrapping a piece of hair around it to keep it from unraveling. I'm gonna like make a knot. Let me see if this looks crazy before I even. Okay, it kind of looks crazy, but like not too crazy. That fridge sounding like that is not okay. I'm using the end of my brush to pull out the braid and make it bigger. And you don't even need that, you can do it with your hands. So I'm just, hands is easier. I'm just using this to like pull it out and make it thicker and wider and blend in with my hair at the top. That's looking crazy. See, this is how the whole braid looked and now it's looking like this. So I'm just gonna keep manipulating it a little bit. Okay, that looks better to me. It's a little frizzy all over. I'm not mad at that. Any of my hair that I think is too frizzy, I'm just tucking it in to the braids. I just thought of something really cute. I have these bobby pins. They have these little like diamond studs on the end. I'm gonna pull all these out. And I'm gonna stick them in the braid. Or a little rattle dazzle. Really a nod to Nora cause she loves little studs and shit like that. In the braid. Cute. Yeah, see, I like it. Okay, and the finished look is her. Hey girl, let me take this off my head. Almost forgot, okay. I don't see my lip gloss, so I'll just do this one. I'll grab it on the way out. I know it's somewhere up there. Um, very cute. I love everything I've got going on. I have on like little things here and there. Um, cute jewelry, cute hair. Um, I have on these little gold heels that I got from Topshop years ago, and I'm just wearing. Thank you. Okay, so it's, I might be having some nip slips tonight, so I gotta be careful of that, but otherwise, looking good. Bye, y'all. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Ugh. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, fuck me. Oof. You know it's real when your ears is popping with it. Oh, yeah. Getting some stretching in because I'm about to go work out. Um, I started my period today. If I don't work out right now, it's not gonna happen. And this is really my only window. So today, the plan is go work out, come back, shower, edit until dinner tonight. I got dinner tonight. So that's what we gonna do. Hopefully I finish this vlog. I really want to, but also I'm not putting that much pressure on myself. Like, I might not finish in time. I might not, like, I might not. Yeah, this is one of the weekends and it just doesn't happen often, but one of the weekends where I had a lot going on. Yeah. Ooh, I look tacky. Yeah, let's do like that. I look tacky as hell. But you know what? This ain't no damn fashion show. Do I want to go out and work out today? Fuck no. 
But do I want to keep my ass sitting up high, nice and round like a peach? Fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. I do want that. I do. I do. So, I'm going to keep this juicy booty by going to the gym today. And it's leg day. So, I'm going to spend some time on the Stairmaster and um, do some weight stuff. All right, bye bitch, I'll see you when I get back back. When I tell you I'm tired, I'm tired, like my body is worn out. And it's just, it's just cause I'm on my cycle and I did a lot of activity this morning. I was about to make myself a whole grilled cheese uh, with some soup on the side, but instead, I'm gonna drink this green juice and eat this fruit. Because we're having dinner at seven, it's already about to be four. Yeah. And I don't want to ruin my appetite. I don't know why my fridge makes that noise now. When I saw maintenance and I told him about it, he was like, yeah, can you try to like uh, capture a video of it? Because that video, we are not really going to know what's going on with it. I'm like, it happens randomly, so. And I ain't showing him this. Maybe I will and just put their ear to it. They ain't got to look. Keep on, keep, keep, keep on. No, I forgot I got that croissant toast. I sure did. I'm a man piece of that. I sure with my head now from the back. Anyway, I'm about to get some of this edit done. So, I'll see y'all. Before I go, what is the reason for married men following me? Like, or any single woman. Like, if my husband is on Instagram, you don't need to be following nobody new. Cause what's the reason? What, what would be your reason for looking at this girl's post who typically posts pictures of her looking cute, Showing a little this, showing a little that. Like I'm trying to understand the reason why a married man will be liking my pictures and reels. Help me understand that. What are you doing? Okay. Bye. I got work to do. I got a job, baby. Oh boy. I got work to do for real. Tomorrow, as soon as I get up. All day tomorrow, we editing, 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 editing. So I'm gonna edit, I'm gonna finish. I'll probably finish the part two of vlog number 13. Or is this vlog 12? Vlog 13. I'll finish part two of vlog 13 midday tomorrow. And then I'll edit as much as I can for this week's vlog. And hopefully I can get it up today. If not, I'll put it out on Tuesday. And then we'll be back on track. Yeah, so originally I was I really wanted to get this vlog out last week. Well, the vlog that I'm editing right now, not this vlog. This vlog is vlog 14. But the vlog, the part two vlog that I've been editing today, I wanted to get that out on Wednesday, but it just didn't work out that way. The reason why I turned my camera on is because I was thinking, I want to try going like 30 days no makeup like only under eye concealer, mascara, and eyebrows max, and drinking a shit ton of water and see like how my skin responds. What we both know is that I'm probably gonna come out looking fucking flawless and looking like fuck. Now this is what I gotta do with the rest of my life. But I just wanna see like what it does for my skin, just like, Overall, like what does the glow, what will the glow provide me with, you know? Double cleanse, when people say double cleanse, do they mean that they're using the same cleanser? Or does that mean they're using like an oil cleanser and then using a different cleanser? Cause whenever I see other people saying they double cleanse, they're talking about two different cleansers. And I be talking about the same cleanser. Like I'm just using my same cleanser, I'm just cleaning twice. And I do this on days where I feel like I have makeup on for a really long time, or like if the first wash, if I feel like that didn't get it all off, just to be really thorough. Cause the makeup not being washed off your face, 
is probably why you're dealing with some breakouts. I know that was a big thing for me. It's because I was not washing my face thoroughly. And sometimes I was not washing my face at all because I would be at a rockhead nigga's house and not want to wash my face at his house. I also be forgetting. And it's crazy, I be forgetting because it's like, bitch, it happened to you. But like, I used to be stressed. And I'm one of those people who like, my nervous system is really sensitive. So when I'm stressed, I'm stressed. And it shows up, um, you know, on my face or in my appetite. Like, yeah, for real. My nervous system is very, very sensitive to stress. Which is why I really do not play about people disturbing my damn peace. And I really honor my my personal peace and my alone time because when it's disturbed it's disturbed okay but yeah there was a time where i was really going through it um not just with boys but like with family shit and also just like being a young independent person trying to figure this shit out like when all my friends were in college i was working full time paying rent i owned my own car i had my own spot anyway my point in all this was my skin is very sensitive to stress and i have been stressed these last few weeks and so i started noticing it in my skin and i just want to help by eating nutritional things and you know with the diet part like I want to I wanna help in that realm. Like, I know I could eat better. I know I could drink more water. I do not drink enough water. And the thing is, is that I don't really drink a whole bunch of other bullshit, but it don't matter. Like, you ain't drinking shit. So now you just thirsty, bitch. <laughs> My skin is looking good these days. I'll say that. Like, I'm not mad at what I've got going on, but I do feel like um, we could take it a step Further, I want my skin to just like pop. I wanna, I don't wanna have to wear makeup ever. Sometimes I feel like I have to put makeup on and I don't wanna feel like that. Um, this is where that big bump was, but it's completely flat now and it's just the mark, so that'll go away. We good on this side. We ain't got no blemishes on this side. But let me not speak too soon because I could wake up and something be here, so. But yeah, my forehead be crystal clear. Like, why can't all of my skin be my forehead? Like, be like my forehead. Like, what, what happened? I don't know. Anyway, now I gotta stay up for like a cool 20, 30 minutes to let this seep into my skin. I'm gonna drink my green juice before I go to sleep and flip through a magazine. My new thing is like no TV, no phone for like the last hour of my day. So, yeah. I will see y'all in the morning. Bye. Actually, this is the end of the vlog, so I'll see y'all in the next vlog. Bye.